So um, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the fourth um, rewilding intro of the European uh, Rewilding Network. So for those who are attending for the first time, just shor shortly about the ERN, uh, this is short for the European Rewilding Network. Uh, it is a living network of rewilding uh, initiatives. Uh, we have 66 uh, member on board members on board uh, spanning uh, 27 uh, European countries. Uh, its objective is to enhance the rewilding impact of uh, each of our members by facilitating the exchange of uh, knowledge and experience. So this is why uh, we are all here. So allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, May. Um, I am the coordinator of the European Rewilding Network, working for uh, Rewilding Europe. I am based in Zagreb, Croatia. So hello from Zagreb. And uh, I am going to be your host today and I will be moderating this event, especially the Q&A uh, part, which comes at the end. Um, yeah, it is really superb to see so many uh, of you with present here with us today. And uh, yeah, no wonder, as we are talking about such fascinating work, uh, on the reintroduction um, of the ghost of the forest to Slovenia and to my home country, uh, Croatia. So as rewilding intros are um, our network events, which, uh, which are open to public, uh, except the ERN members uh, who are today here with us, uh, I would like to welcome all rewilding advocates, uh, supporters, our partners, um, and all the fellow rewilders. Uh, a big welcome goes to Rok Cerne, uh, who is the coordinator of the Life Links project from the Slovenia Forest Service. Rok, it is really a pleasure to have you here with us today. Um, uh, I would also like to say hi to my colleague uh, Maria Krnjaj. She is the team leader of Velebit Mountains Rewilding Area in, in, in Croatia. So she's here uh, as well, uh, if you want to, uh, want to post some questions in the Q&A for her. Um, so today uh, we will be hearing about the Lifelinks project and how it is rescuing the Dinaric uh, Southeast Alpine popul lynx population from extinction. So before I hand over to Rock, just one more thing. Uh, as these events have a large audience, uh, your audio and your video is disabled. So uh, for any questions, uh, please uh, use the questions and, and Q&A box. Uh, at the end of uh, Rock, uh, Rock's presentation, we are going to set aside five to ten minutes and we'll try to answer as, as many questions in this uh, short time period uh, as we can. Rock, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm handing over to you. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, nice uh, introduction. Um, I start sharing my screen now. Uh, so just a second. Uh, oh. doesn't work completely. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, yes, I can see it. You just need to expand. Uh -huh, okay. So I don't. Is it now okay? I, I still see it with the slides, not in the presentation mode. Okay. Ah, now this should... Is it okay now? Uh, I still, at the beginning. Yeah, I still see the slides. Yeah, we're at the beginning. You uh -huh, just need to not, enlarge it. Something that work properly because I have stop share just a second. Um, uh, just a second. Let me try to make it. Um, uh, screen don't share. Ah, 
Um, well, maybe you still, can. It's, is it's it still just uh, one, right? Uh, yeah, it's still it's still seen with the slides, but maybe you can start with the presentation like this. Uh, I will I will try to fix it. Just let me let me stop share. Um, share. Uh, screen one. Yeah. Um. yeah. Yeah. I can. See. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. No. 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 Zoom can can pass without some technical uh, <laughs> issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. But it's uh, fine. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you once again for uh, inviting me. Um, I will start my uh, presentation uh, with a short story about one uh, very important uh, links uh, for, for our uh, population. Uh, it is the links uh, Goru. I can't, can't go on with the slides again, something. Um, uh, okay, so this is uh, the links Goro. Uh, his story uh, is that he was translocated from Romania to uh, Slovenia uh, in 2019. Uh, he was translocated on the border area between uh, Slovenia and uh, Croatia and released uh, in uh, May uh, 2019. First, uh, he went a little bit to Croatia, uh, and then he made a circle around uh, Slovenia. He came pretty close uh, to Lub Ljubljana, and then wandered uh, a little bit south again. Uh, he established a territory here, and why here? We were really lucky uh, because we also had on a collar uh, a female resident Lynx here, uh, Lynx Thea. And uh, immediately uh, when they met, uh, they, uh, Goru stopped uh, moving. So uh, this is also a happy event which happened afterwards. Uh, they made it uh, pretty late. Uh, this was uh, uh, in June already, and they had offspring in August. And we were we could follow this uh, reproduction, and it was a successful uh, reproduction of these two animals. And we follow their movement also the next year. And uh, last year, these two animals had three uh, kittens. So these are four kittens uh, already. One interesting thing uh, is also uh, to see that during the uh, reproductive uh, period, during the mating season, this is uh, in uh, March, uh, Goru makes also some excursions once uh, to Croatia. This was 2019. And 2020, he moved a little bit in a different direction, but still we hope to that he found other females with which he mated during these two events. So why is this Lynx Goro such an important uh, animal? And why, uh, uh, what is his role? Why did, he bring, did we bring him from uh, Romania? The main purpose is to save the whole this uh, population from uh, extinction because it's so uh, genetically inbred that if we bring some, don't bring some additional animals uh, from uh, Carpathian mountains or from other population, this population will be gone. And to understand why this population is so critically endangered, uh, we have to go a little bit back 
to look in the history what was going on uh, in this area. So I will show a little bit more data from Slovenia because I have them uh, available. Uh, so uh, Lynx was present in most of uh, Europe till about two centuries ago. Uh, then Lynx started to uh, disappear uh, in Slovenia at the end of 19th uh, century, uh, the Lynx uh, disappeared. Why did they disappear? One important reason is uh, that people didn't tolerate it and they were systematically eradicating all carnivores uh, during that time. The second reason is that also there was re really limited availability of prey. There was uh, so also no food for the animals. Uh, and also uh, for Slovenia, I can share uh, the data that about 150 years ago, Slovenia had about half of the forest cover than it has now. So in that time, uh, it was between uh, 30 to 35 percent of the cover forest cover in the whole Slovenia, and now it's about 60 percent. So also the habitat uh, was very limited. So in the years after the, especially after the Second World War, the situation improved. This is a uh, recent habitat model and it shows that the Dinaric uh, mountains and also the Alps are a very suitable uh, habitat for lynx. Uh, also prey availability uh, in Slovenia is good. Just some illustrative information. In average in Slovenia 35,000 roe deer are culled each year and about 6,000 red deer are culled each year. Uh, so roe deer for lynx is the most important as the main uh, prey species for this animal in this part of Europe. Uh, and the third really important thing uh, is the acceptance of people toward uh, lynx. Uh, this is if people will accept the lynx, lynx will stay in the forest. If people will not tolerate the lynx, uh, the lynx will not be able to stay uh, in our forest. Uh, this is what happened about 150 years ago. People didn't tolerate uh, the lynx and exterminated it. Uh, so this tolerance is a really important uh, thing and I will tackle this issue also in the future of my uh, presentation. So uh, after the lynx in eradication in 1973, uh, hunters uh, and uh, foresters in Slovenia released uh, six uh, animals, three females, three males, uh, which were translocated uh, from uh, Slovakia. And this was a really, really uh, successful uh, uh, comeback of a species. Uh, they spread really fast uh, to Croatia, uh, also to Bosnia, and even on the north uh, to Italy and partly to Austria. Uh, if we look at the uh, mortality, which is recording during that time, uh, we can also see how this uh, population developed. Uh, showing this data is important to understand that the hunters brought these animals also with the purpose to bring an additional trophy animal to this uh, forest. So they really wanted the species back, but already at the beginning when they brought the animal, they planned some culling of this animal. So if we look at this uh, data, altogether more than 300 uh, animals were uh, culled in our forests. And this data also showed the development of the population. At the beginning, really successful, fast increase uh, in the numbers. But then after the year uh, 2000, um, the population started to shrink and less and less animals were present in the population and especially in Slovenia also we could see how it spatially shrinks uh, again uh, to just to the Dinaric mountains. 
what was the main reason for this uh, strong decrease of the population? Uh, it was uh, inbreeding. Uh, I won't go in details with this. I will just uh, explain here two uh, information which are calculated by geneticists from the University of uh, Ljubljana. So the effective population size is really uh, reducing fast. Uh, so effective population size means basically to, in a simplified way how many animals are included into the reproduction events. And if you look at the period 2010-2016, uh, it's just between 4 and uh, 10 animals. And this number is so low, it doesn't mean that so few reproductions are taking place, that just the animals are so inbred or similar genetically to each other uh, that this uh, mixing of genes doesn't bring the effect which would normally uh, be in place. And the second is um, the uh, inbreeding coefficient. So uh, the inbreeding, the calculated inbreeding coefficient is uh, rising. And this is, these are the calculation. And you see the line at zero, 0 0.4, it's the expected extinction of the population. So you could see that we are really close to this uh, uh, extinction uh, once again. Uh, that's why uh, together with the neighboring countries and Romania and Slovakia, uh, we applied for funding from the European Commission on some national farming uh, to make the LifeLinks project happen with the goal of which is to prevent the extinction of the Dinaric South East Alpine lynx population. Uh, so this is the part actually which we want to bring new animals in. So this is the dinaric part, uh, bring new genes and uh, make the population survive. Uh, and this is the part of the alpine uh, population, which is practically extinct. We see uh, practically no animals in this area any, anymore. And we plan to make a stepping stone population here with uh, new animals. And we hope in the future uh, that this stepping stone will help with the connection towards the populations in Switzerland and Austria. So uh, this is the project area, Slovakia and Romania as the source country, uh, Croatia, Slovenia and Italy uh, as the countries where the uh, project is uh, implemented. So to look closer, what is the main goal of the project? To include four animals into the population in Croatia, to include five animals into the population in the Dinaric part of Slovenia, and five animals into the Alpine or part of Slovenia. What I mean with included into population, uh, it's important to understand that not every animal which we bring uh, uh, will be successfully uh, included into the population. Some animals can go away, some animals can be run over by a car or whatever uh, accident can happen to them. So we really strongly monitor this population and these animals and follow how they are included into the population. One such example of uh, following how the animals are included into the population uh, was shown at the beginning with uh, Lynx Guru. So a little bit of results, what we are doing during the project and uh, what are my, our main focus, what is our main focus. So we brought till now seven animals to Dinaric Park, Slovenia and Croatia. Three animals uh, were released uh, in Croatia, four in Slovenia. 
and among those seven animals, for five, for four of them, we can say that they established a territory, and we are really optimistic they that they were part of the reproductive process uh, this year. And one lynx max is a really interesting uh, animal. He is still searching for his uh, territory where he will uh, hopefully then uh, stay. Uh, you can see a little bit of the stories of the lynx max on our web page if you're interested. So uh, now, uh, May, if you can please uh, show a video. It uh, will show the release of Lynx uh, Max, and then uh, please follow what we are trying to emphasize during this uh, video. And I will, in the future, explain uh, why these things are so important for us. Rocky will just tell me if the sound is working. It's working. Okay, fantastic. He was really relaxed uh, in the quarantine, so also in our rescue station, so everything was without uh, any uh, problems, so I'm really happy that now he is uh, uh, healthy and uh, he has a second chance of the life. This Lynx uh, was very interesting because he came in very bad uh, condition. Uh, he had a lot of problems with uh, parasites, with uh, broken leg and bad uh, body condition. After this bad condition he can uh, go into the wild nature. It's uh, very nice for us. Chris <laughs> So pravi vsi lovci, ko se deluje z nami pri monitoringu in smo mi potem iz teh imen izbrali na bor nekih petih imen. Potem smo pa te imena plasirali na Facebook skupino Hunting in Slovenia, um, kjer je poključenih približno 8000 lovcev uh, in smo v bistvu en teden pustili za to glasovanje za, za ime. Um, zmagalo je ime Max, uh, ki je pa hkrati tudi poklon um, Maxu Konečniku, ki je leta 1973 skrbel uh, za šest risov v obori um, na Kočevskem, tako da se mi zdi to ena taka um, lepa gesta. No. Detko odziv na to je bil, ste ga res razveselili s tem, ne? Uh, tako da ja, en tak simboličen uh, det, da je žal pač v malo slabem zdravstvenem stanju, tako da je to en tak simboličen način, kako njegovo življenje naprej uh, ali pa njegovo ime naprej obdržati ne, v, v slovenskih pozdavih. Max, ja. definitivno pač Max je legenda slovenskega lovstva. V čast mi je bilo, da smo lahko sodelovali pred, pred tem projektu, kaj od kaj te vemo. Ris je uh, kraljeva, kraljeva zvir, uh, je mačka in uh, fajn je, da lahko sodelujemo pred teh projektih. Že to, da smo izbrali ime, nam je veliko pomenilo, se pravi, uh, s ponosom sem sprejel to zadevo. Ne? Obnašanje, od kar je bil v obori, je bilo normalno. Vsek dan smo hledali za njega skrbeli, če je imel za dosti sveže vode in hrane, kar je pojel srno se nadomestilo z drugim komadom srnjadi. Lovišče je vključeno v projekte, ki so tekli in ki tečejo danes še na področju Slovenije. Mislim, da smo opravičili to ime, posebni namen, ne? in da dokazujemo tudi zdaj z risom, da je naš odnos ne samo deklarativno takšen, kakršen pravim, ampak da je dejansko tak v resnici. Ja, jaz sem seveda hlasovala z ime Max, potem sem bila žrebana, teda sem bila zelo vesela, 
ki se mi zdi pač, da en tak dohodek verjetno ne bom nikoli več videla. In en tak izpust ni isto, kot kar če vidiš risa v živalskem vrti ali pa kaj podobno, tako da je nekaj enkratnega. Ja, čudovite občutke so samo, malo se sprašujem, če bo ta risek preživ, v kje je že toli cej to etništve, kako bo on tu, pač verjetno bo se ima v genah. Max tudi, čeprav je bil poškodovan, pa zaparazitiran, pa shiran, pa vse, pa tak, ko me je preživel sploh, da je do nas prišel, je za populacijo, če mu uspe preživeti, pa se pariti, je ravno tako pomemben kot katerikoli drugi res. Njegov doprinos populaciji je njegov genetski materijal. Upamo pa lahko samo, da je preživel uspešno. Ta del je. To pa mu mora uspeti. Mu držimo pesti. So, the lynx, Max, was a special animal. All other animals were caught in the wild and brought to Slovenia and released. But this animal was special because it was found in a really bad condition and rehabilitated in Slovakia and then brought to Slovenia. Um, and uh, unfortunately, this was filmed uh, during the release, but the animal is still uh, healthy and uh, pretty much alive. We just have an information from last weekend uh, that he uh, managed to capture a red deer, which had about 70 kilos. So he's pretty a wild animal. Um, so. Uh, you could see that we emphasized during the movie uh, that hunters were taking uh, care of the animal uh, and hunters release it. So uh, it's really important for us that hunters accept uh, these animals and we try to involve them uh, into the project in really different uh, ways. So this was one of the way which was explained that uh, we uh, used their uh, Facebook profile so they could choose the name and they chose the name after a hunter which took care already 50 years ago almost uh, for the animals which were released in 73. So this was a really uh, interesting thing that we could uh, do. And that I come to the next thing, which is also really important uh, in our project, because it's uh, not just bringing the animals and releasing the animals uh, won't uh, ensure the long uh, term uh, that the, 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 the population will stay here in long term. We have to do many other things. So one of them is monitoring to see uh, what is going on uh, with the population and also with uh, monitoring, we can uh, include the hunters uh, uh, pretty much. So in Slovenia, uh, we have 250 cameras on the field, uh, which are taken care by the hunters. So we go together with the hunters on the field, ask them about the information, where to set the cameras, where they have the ideas of the where the links is present, then we also uh, put it together with our knowledge, where are the good places to set the cameras uh, and collect then the, the photos. So here on the photos, you can see uh, photos of, uh, of which we gather during the field. So if you look at these photos, uh, do you maybe, can you maybe see, is it all one animal or are these different animals? So uh, the lynx uh, have got uh, their coat pattern is like our fingerprint. Uh, so when we see their coat pattern, uh, we can know, is it, go, is it the same lynx or these are different lynxes? So if you 
look a little bit carefully on the, in this case, on the neck of this animal, uh, you can see that it's all uh, one animal on all these uh, photos. Um, okay, this is another one about close corroboration uh, with the hunters. And uh, we are having also a portal, uh, which is currently run by the uh, Croatian University of uh, Zagreb, uh, where we put uh, all the photos collected during our uh, uh, photo monitoring. So we, we, this is the way how we give a feedback to everybody who is uh, also helping us with collection of this uh, data. But we are uh, planning even to make a new portal, uh, which will even improve, which will be even improved. Um, the second thing is really important uh, with the links. Uh, we have to follow inbreeding, especially in this population. This is really uh, important. We are collecting scat samples, urine samples, and hair samples. Uh, this is really not so uh, easy to do. Uh, but during the snow, we go on the field a lot and try to collect some urine and scat samples and hair samples we usually collect on some marking locations, which uh, links are marking and we know them for uh, uh, photo monitoring. So uh, with this, the inbreeding uh, is calculated. I already explained about inbreeding uh, before, but here we already have uh, some results, uh, how the uh, new animals are improving uh, the status of the population. On, on the left uh, side, you can see what the effect of what we actually already have done. And on the right side, is, we can see what is expected to happen with the inbreeding in this population when the older, older plant animals will be released. So uh, in addition to this, we are really happy that the hunters are leading the action of uh, uh, establishing a special police investigation unit. Uh, so they uh, helped with the police. Uh, some members of the hunters association are also employed at the police. So this was a help and they established a special police investigation unit who is investigating uh, any poaching, not just for lynx, but for any animal. And I think it's really important that the hunters are really supportive to this, uh, and they are also informing their members about this unit and how unacceptable poaching uh, is. And some other activities which we are doing uh, in, the in the project to uh, increase especially acceptance of the links and to make the habitat for links better. Uh, so we have yearly uh, management plans for our Wongolet species, which are done by the, by the uh, Slovenia Forest Service. So now within those uh, planning, we are taking into account the links uh one side we are giving some advantages to those hunting grounds uh, which are having the links in comparison with those which are don't we do the same for the wolf and on the other side uh one lynx uh, is having uh quite an influence on his prey species so it's important to take care uh, that this is taken into account uh we also have an action with the damage prevention. So Lynx in Slovenia is doing really few damages. Now we have the data about approximately one per year. Um, this is low number, especially due to much higher numbers from the wolves and bears and work we are doing there with the prevention uh, for proper protection of especially uh, small uh, cattle, but in the areas where wolf or bear are not present, lynx can have a more significant influence on the, on the small cattle uh, than in our case. Um, special connectivity uh, is really important if, as, as I mentioned before, already this generic uh, population 
cannot be self-sustainable in long term so the connection with other populations uh, is really important but for that of course we need uh, connected habitats just with a connected habitat this will be possible and uh, of course uh, we are in close con contact uh, especially with croatia and, and uh, italian uh, managers uh, so uh, we are regularly uh, exchanging information, make a transboundary management plan, and based on the transboundary management plan, we then make national strategic documents. And uh, communication, uh, this is really uh, important, as I try to emphasize during my presentation, involving hunters into releases and monitoring is uh, really uh, important. Uh, they have to know what's going on, they have to know how critically endangered this uh, species is now in this part of uh, Europe, and so just with their cooperation together we can uh, ensure the long-term existence of this animal. Uh, local consultative groups are important in the areas where we are releasing the animals, we establish local consultative groups. Uh, we uh, included some mayors and local opinion makers uh, into this group. Of course, anybody can join and we regularly inform them. We have a meeting once or twice per year with them. Uh, we are having some dinners together when it's allowed uh, and um, we are informing them through, through uh, emails. Uh, we also prepare articles, uh, special for the local magazines, uh, and we are carrying a lot of communication with the journalists about events which we are doing. This communication uh, is really important. Of course, we have a website and a Facebook. Everybody's welcome to look at the website or join our Facebook profile. Uh, what we did is also a documentary film. It's available on also on our webpage. Uh, within this documentary film, we try to emphasize uh, the importance uh, of the events which happened in '73 and the fact that the comeback of the lynx was carried out by the uh, hunters and the foresters. Uh, we are regularly producing such video clips, uh, which one of them was shown with the links marks on different topics. Uh, some of them are with the releases, some of them are uh, with monitoring, some of them are the comparison with the neighboring countries, so different topics which are covered within our uh, project. We are also doing art exhibition which is now moved around uh, uh, Slovenia. The whole art exhibition is about lynx, so artists were gathered, they painted a lynx and now this exhibition is moving around Slovenia and we use this uh, for communication. And we also have some ambassadors, some famous uh, people like Jacob Peter is a famous hockey player who is playing in, in America. Uh, and the uh, ski jumper Peter Preutz, and they are also helping us uh, with communication of this uh, project. So this project, of course, wouldn't be uh, possible without many partners. So we have partners from Slovenia, uh, from Croatia, from Italy, from Romania, from Slovakia, um, and also a lot of uh, communication among partners uh, needs to be carried out, but this is necessary and really important. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Rock, uh, thanks uh, for for this uh, inspiring uh, reintroduction uh, story. Um, I'm going to go quickly to the Q&A, so because we don't have a lot of time. There's one attendee that raised her hand, and I think she she would like to uh, ask a question. So I'm going to uh, enable her to to do that. And in the meantime, if anybody has, else have any questions, please raise your hand or type your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, Alina. We we can't hear you at the moment. Uh, you're you're muted.
Well, uh, she, we can, Alina, we can still not hear you. You need to turn on your microphone. But in the mid meantime, we have uh, a question from Clarisse uh, de Toisi. I hope I'm pronouncing this well. Uh, she said, hi, are there any great links, NGOs or sanctuaries in Europe? Um, uh, in Slovenia and Croatia, we don't have a links uh, sanctuary, but uh, as I explained the story about the links uh, max, uh, the Azu Bojnice, if there are any orphan links uh, found, these animals are brought uh, to the to Zu Bojnice. They try to rehabilitate it there and then uh, release it. Uh, in this case, this animal was not released in Slovakia, was, but was brought to uh, Slovenia. But saying that in Slovenia and Croatia, we don't have such a center, uh, in any case, uh, in Croatia, National Park Lisniak has got an enclosure where they can bring the lynx uh, into and help them uh, if it's uh, necessary. And also in Slovenia, of course, we could use one of the release enclosures to, to help such animals. Uh, but for now, in the last years, there was no lynx found on the field which would uh, need uh, help. Uh, thanks, Rog. There's a, there are some questions I'm going to uh, spread it in them. So uh, there's one question coming from Levin. Based on the suitable habitat map, how large how large can the population be? Is there also a policy of restoring the most suitable habitat? Does that mean a decrease of the forest surface? So I can really answer this uh, for uh, Slovenia. So we calculated that a bit more than 100 lynxes can be uh, present uh, in Slovenia and the habitat is not a limiting factor in Slovenia and for sure also not uh, in Croatia. Uh, also for the Alps, as you could see from the model, the habitat is okay. So there are really um, other things uh, which needs to be carried out. So the habitat is not the most critical point. What I would emphasize is the, what we have to take care on is the connectivity of the habitat. In Slovenia, we currently have one highway which is running from Ljubljana towards our coast. Uh, which doesn't have a green bridge, and this would be a really important thing uh, to do uh, in the next uh, years. Uh, on the other side, I can see, I can say that Croatia made a really great job with connectivity when they were building their uh, highways. So, on the highway, it really has a lot of uh, green bridges, and the further correction down towards uh, Croatia, from Croatia towards Bosnia, is pretty well. So about improving the habitat, our highway between Ljubljana and the coast, uh, so Trieste or Koper, uh, would be important uh, in this part of Europe. Um, another question, uh, do you got some compliments, fantastic presentation and video, says Faye, did you come across any social issues you were able to resolve through communication? So social issues, um, so what, what we uh, came across, uh, for example, if we, uh, what at the beginning, what we did, we, for, for example, talked with the hunters uh, about the release enclosure for Guru. And uh, we agreed with the, everything with the hunters and we thought we communicated everything really well, but we didn't talk with the mayor of that municipality. And that mayor, when he found out that this release enclosure is being built uh, or will be built in his uh, area, he was mad because we didn't uh, talk to him first. So through this uh, experience, we always, especially now when we work on Gorenska region, uh, we kind of map all the important people which need to be uh, informed and invite them, explain them what we are uh, doing. Because the worst thing to do is the, if the people are not informed. Our experience is if we inform the people well and we tell them the purpose of what we are doing and how we are going to do it, and then regularly what we are doing at the moment, uh, it is well accepted by the public. 
Um, a question coming from uh, Phil Kohn. Great presentation. Have you noticed any cascading effects as a result of links being reintroduced on the local ecosystem, e.g., uh, example given increased forest health due to less grazing by herbivores? <laughs> well, we don't uh, have uh, such a good uh, monitoring of this that I would be really able to uh, say what uh, cascade effect was, was it for example, as it was in Yellowstone when bringing uh, back the uh, wolves. Uh, this is one really great example, really greatly uh, monitored. Uh, and what we also, we don't have a point zero because the links uh, were introduced in 73. So the population now is decreasing and now we try to uh, bring it back, uh, that, but we don't have a situation without the links and uh with the links uh so no i cannot tell any uh concrete results about this but what we know is that the behavior of the animals changes they hide more uh especially the roe deer uh, uh and uh it's important for the communication with the hunters because they see less animal they think that they don't uh that the, the animals are gone so uh, we are trying to communicate this that the that the behavior of the prey species changes when the lynx is back uh and not that that the animals are gone okay thanks uh there's another question uh coming from Annabella theory uh thank you for um, thank you very much for this presentation have you been contacted or approached from france because of the permanent population of links in the territory um i mean with uh, with france we are in contact through alpine convention visa platform members of the alps uh, we have a special board where we talk about all three uh, large carnivores so of course the lynx is also a topic there uh and we are also uh, in contact with the colleagues from uh, bavarian forest uh, from the palatinate forest so we know for each other we talk to each other about uh, the experience which we uh, get and try to of course to learn from each other um uh, unfortunately we are uh, already around uh, 15 minutes over our schedule so um i know there are some uh, unanswered questions um, Rock, for the questions that we are left, we left open. Can I send? You, can I send you the contact so you might your communications team? I want to answer it uh, later on. Would that be okay? Uh, we have also uh, an email on live links, so mm -hmm. everybody has got who has got additional questions can email us, and uh, we will answer. Uh, maybe I can just uh, tell you the email. Uh, just let me check it uh, it's you can also find it on our uh, web page but uh, just let me uh, it's live.links.eu afnagmail.com yeah okay maybe we can put this in the chat box yeah uh, okay C can yeah. you write it me live.links.eu afnagmail.com Give me a second. I'm just going to, you're still sharing your screen. So let's oh, yes. uh, okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said uh, live dot links. Dot. Uh, so wait, I have to go back to see it. Uh, live dot links dot EU. Mm -hmm. um, Afna, this a mm -hmm. g yeah. gmail dot com. Gmail dot com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. So, uh, uh, thank you, Rock, again uh, for for this uh, fantastic presentations and also for for giving us uh, hope into the reintroduction uh, work, not only for lynx but uh, for for other species. It is um, it was really interesting to see how you are working and uh, uh, in very closely working with your stakeholders and. Uh, that you have really strong communication activities because I think they really have to go hand in hand with the with the rewilding nature conservation work uh, in your case the reintroduction work because uh, 
one without the other um, does not uh, uh, bring to, to success. And uh, I think that your project is uh, really uh, modeling uh, this approach. Um, thank you everybody for participating. I hope that you liked the year and uh, intro events. Uh, in the coming uh, months, we will be um, presenting other projects uh, from our members. And uh, as Rock said, if you have any questions, you can visit, you can email them. And uh, for more information about Goru, Doru, Max, and other links, uh, you can um, just go to their website or far, follow their social media uh, to learn what's going on with the links uh, in their project. Uh, I wish you all a great day and a nice afternoon. Um, yeah, and goodbye. Thank ciao, you very ciao, much everybody. For Thanks, Rog. Bye. Yeah, bye bye.